Hello everyone, this is Dawn here, um, unexpected again. It is uh, May 5th, 5-5. Five, five. And all morning I was guided to just get to the computer and make, um, I actually they were saying to do it live on YouTube. I've never done that and I can't figure it out. So I'm just recording and um, there will be a slight delay in when they wanted this to um, be available to you. So it's extremely important. Um, I am gonna be looking at my notes um, I, you know, like I had this nice plan in my heart um, in terms of the heart to heart with divine masculine, divine feminine, and it's just not going to happen right now. They're, they've been very clear about that. Um, this morning in particular, it's gotten louder and louder and louder. And so here I am to share the messages that I have um, been shown. And um, so um, I ask that you open your heart to receive what is here for you. You will know, you trust yourself to know what it is that's here for you. So um, I'm entitling this video um, Heart to Heart, as I intended, Heart to Heart with the Divine uh, Feminine, Divine Masculine. I'm going to do a little bit of an update about April um, because I did speak about that. I'm going to talk about what's happening right now, which is early May. And this is an incredibly huge passage, way bigger than I expected, to be honest. Um, and this is like ready or not, the masks are coming off and it is happening um, right now in rapid fashion. Um, and then I'm going to share a practice for purity and protection as well and speak to both Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, very um, unique um, messages to each. So I'll put the links below to where that starts if you want to jump to that, because um, if there's a delay in uploading this, I know it'll be a little bit of a time lag from when they wanted this. They wanted this to get out. It's noon right now. I was a little late getting to this um, and like they want it out now. So um, so let's start. Um, welcome. First of all, I'm Dawn Richardson and Twin Hearts Ablaze. This is my um, channel where I share about sacred partnership um, to include um, a reunion with your um, divinely intended partner um, for illumined ones. And I am um, an illumined ones that is sometimes called twin a twin flame, and uh, but that term is bandied about very loosely, and I prefer not to use it. So I'm going to start by catching you up about my view and what I was shown about April. Um, I spoke about that because I was shown <clears throat> a year ago in France um, something that would unfold, and I spoke about it in a previous video. And I did, um, I did uh, just assume that it would be the physical manifestation, and what. Um, what I was shown is actually exactly what I saw happened, but in the higher d dimensions. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so, wow. Um, yeah, um, so what in April, first of all, at the end of April, I'm sure you, you all experienced the waves of, of new energy flooding in and light. Um, and April was quite interesting for many of us. Um, lots of inner, um, um, inner uh, clearing and also a, just of a deeper, um, um, like a, a, a sinking of all that is internal for us, um, for the divine feminine in particular. Um, so there are waves of light coming in and there, the revelations of um, all that has been and all that will be um, is being made manifest right now. So, um, and I've been told that that begins right now, 5-5, five, five, May 5th, today. So um, today, um, this morning, early, when I was thinking about, okay, how am I going to do a live video? And I was just uh, clicking around to um, real quick check on a couple of things on my channel and, um, and look at a couple of other um, quick videos, I noticed an insane mirroring. So I'd be watching a video, say that was um, 7 minutes and 42 seconds, and I would look up and see 247. Or um, I think my own video was 7 minutes and 13 seconds, and I would see 317. Um, and that happened five or six times in a row do 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 um, and um, so just an observation I've been noticing so what about April so the good news is that we have we did at, actually come into formation um, both with our divine partner and also with um, with all of us the 144,000 um, and there that happened in the higher realms and so what I was shown is just sort of like that um, and essentially the the groups um, um, uh, it's very hard to describe because it was very, um, you know, um, multidimensional and there was like light coming everywhere. But um, but if you imagine each group of 
um, within the 144,000 um, and in a circle. And then um, the, the, uh, there were key, um, a key pair within each of those groups and they were you know, kind of leaning out. And so what I was shown is you know, the next step is you know, essentially the, our wings and the pairing. And um, it appears that um, some um, have chosen the path of greater turbulence and uh, I'll speak about that a little bit later um, in this video. So I mentioned before that we are sort of hanging in the balance and that balance is the key word. Those of us who are aware, awake, understand what's happening, we must we must really give our attention to maintaining our balance in that ready go position, like ready. Um, so the unfolding of the plan, um, it's inevitable and it's happening right now. Um, and we really are being called to guard our hearts and to release all else, everything else. Even what happens in the short term um, to uh, or with our beloved and to all others that are caught up in illusion. We can no longer afford to um, uh, do anything other than maintain our own um, alignment to God, and that's essential. So a lot is happening. Um, I have noticed especially a lot of clearing in, um, in, in um, real, it's a lot of crown chakra um, stuff for me, um, and a lot of just um, the, the um, pressure, I guess, in, in this area here, um, back, shoulders, and um, head. So um, just allow that and um, the, the key message here is that we must hold the center. We're about to be standing in the midst of a whirlwind. I'll say more about that as well at the end of this video. Um, I have heard several times in the last couple of weeks this um, sort of message of walk through your fear of the fire and you will fly. So walk through your fear of the fire and you will fl fly. I don't know what the fire means. I am thinking it is metaphorical in terms of this um, situation that is unfolding now. Um, um, I certainly hope it's metaphorical, but whatever. Remember that. Walk through your fear of the fire and you will fly. Um, and when I've received that message, there's been a um, deep assurance um, deep, deep assurance. There is, there is now um, something um, where we have been sealed. We have been sealed. And there is, uh, you know, there is no doubt that um, we will survive whatever fire comes. So um, a real, a giant wave is rolling. Let me turn to May, what's happening right now. There's a, a wave that's rolling, and this is like a huge passage that we are all being moved through. And I feel feel that we're being moved through it. Um, like we may have thought that we were doing a lot of good work in terms of, you know, our own healing and our own uh, answering the call. And this is true. And yet we are now being pulled into what is coming next and there is a um, an unfolding process that is happening so this wave the wave patterns actually have shifted here's the good news like the wave patterns have shifted toward the balance of what's new what's coming then you know the new earth heaven on earth and yet when that occurs of course there's the the undercurrent, the undertow. And so this is in our individual lives, bringing up the undercurrent or the opposite wave pattern for deeper healing. So we're right back to uh, some of us to even deeper childhood wounding, um, perhaps that we didn't even realize was there or a new level of that. And it's really a key that we continue to do um, what we need to, to um, reveal the truth beneath that childhood wounding, to return to that sacred wholeness that we are, um, and then to begin to um, engage with that, the wounded one within us. I think that's um, really, really critical right now, and there are a lot of good videos to support you out there and other material. Um, 
I actually had written down this and then um, this morning watched Lee Harris's May energy update. I found that extremely aligned with this idea and also really, really helpful the way he discussed that. So I'm just going to link to that at the end of this video. Really encourage you to watch that. I think that there's some real valuable information there for, um, um, for those of us on this path and also for all who are, um, have been on the awakening journey um, or the ascension journey for some time. So a few messages to both Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. Um, first, a reminder, uh, Divine Feminine, I think, are well aware of this, but we've been doing this together all along. So we have come a long way together. Um, and for most of us, that has not been in full awareness and physical uh, communication and um, proximity. Um, but we make no mistake, we have been doing this together. So, you know, appearances deceive and remember that the truth is greater than that which we can see. So in April, like I said, we essentially brought into alignment um, our, um, our uh, unions um, in multiple dimensions and that bond is now unbreakable. Um, there is no division. There, it really was always unbreakable, but now we are working in greater harmony in multi, mul multiple dimensions, and the, there's just a lag time with the three-dimensional aspect of that. Um, it cannot be shattered. You know, if you are a, you know, I'm going to use the, the term true twin flame, but if you are an illumined one, that union, however it's meant to appear in this life, and it may be include, you know, um, living together, marriage, romance, partnership, it may include, uh, you know, certainly being of service in some way, in a cooperative manner, in some fashion. Um, it may not always mean, you know, you're together physically doing the same work, but um, there is an intention to all of this. And that is super important to remember at this time. So, um, yeah, so we've been, you know, it can't, it can't be broken. It can't be shattered. So there's no need for us to expend our energy trying to protect it. It's okay. It's done. It is done. Um, no matter the flight or fight um, of either of the divine partners, it is done. Um, second thing is um, I was shown that we must, and this is like really relevant for me, I think. Um, so I'll just be vulnerable about that. We have to let go of all resentments now. Like the first, um, my first direction is I have, you know, um, well, there are little, little tiny resentments that maybe we are still holding on to. And maybe it has to do with what's been happening of late, this most recent wave of, you know, yeah, um, interesting developments. Um, but all resentments must be released. So uh, something that I find helpful is to think of the word resentment. I always think of it as resentment. We filed it away somewhere as it's meant to be resent. It's meant to be revisited because darn it, I have something to say about it. And, or, um, you know, I, you know, it's all, you know, that ego desire to express, you know, where we feel we've been, uh, wronged or otherwise, um, you know, we feel a need to, um, to speak to this. And so we filed it away somewhere within us, heart, head, whatever. Um, and it must be released even the most minor things. So uh, one thing that I do to assist me in that regard, it was 1333 on the video, um, is I um, write it down, put it in an envelope, burn the envelope. Um, whatever you do, really pay attention to that. Uh, it's important, apparently, um, that we accelerate that process, release all resentments. Um, third thing is let go of everything to focus on presence and love to all that is unfolding in every moment. Um, in and through your heart primarily, okay? So it's happening through us. It's happening in us. Whatever's happening out there is also important to be, you know, um, aware of and, um, and, but there is a greater need for us to tune in to what is unfolding within us and through us um, than what is happening around us. Trust everything is going to be there that you need. Um, okay, the, that leads to the fourth thing for both Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, which is that you will be protected. We are in every moment protected. You will be strengthened. You will be lifted up. When doubts and particularly um, self-incrimination or self-judgment comes up, um, you know, we, that can even happen our own um, judgment of our, the higher aspects of ourselves because, you know, what the heck? 
you know, I had, so I have this recollection of myself and, and many, um, many of you and we're, you know, we're just like, um, you know, volunteering and we want, you know, I know that for myself, I said I wanted to experience the rejection, the abandonment, the betrayal, all of it, the cross, you know, like whatever. Um, and I wanted so that I might know myself as free within the love of God and as aligned with the love of God and to be used as a vessel of grace. And so, you know, now that I'm here, now that we're here, it can be like, what? <laughs> what did I say? Wait, let me just revisit that. So when in those moments, when you are having one of those moments of, you know, you just, it's incred incredulity or, you know, just uh, perhaps doubt or perhaps, you know, I've had enough of this or, um, I don't know what, you know, that person was saying. There can be a tendency to want to separate ourselves from ourselves, right? Because of the pain or, or the um, absurdity of it all. Um, but it's very important to hold fast to our own heart and to, to um, really um, return, return to the core, return to the very center, the wholeness of who you are, your whole self and your soul self. Um, a tool that I use um, that um, has been helpful to me, I will share, which is, um, and there's, I've, I've always done this and I'm not really sure what the 12 angels of God are, but I've called on the 12 angels of God and the 12 angels, um, and I envision them as a circle around me. And um, let me just see here. Um, so, and then I, I call upon um, those 12 angels of God and I, I ask them to form a, a circle of protection and hold the above and below. And then I pray this prayer. I ask now that only the purity of God flow into the circle and that nothing else be permitted to enter. I ask God's angels of protection to stand with me and that I be given the strength and clarity to reject anything that is not of divine will at this time. I ask Archangel Michael and the legions of light in service to the Most High God to assist me in removing anything that is no longer needed so that I may walk forward freely in service to my Creator and the source of all that is. So that is the prayer that I say. You might want to, um, you know, write your own prayer in the words that feel right to you. But, you know, if you are feeling vulnerable, there is there is absolutely, um, you know, they we are not alone on this journey. And so it, there's absolutely um, an opportunity for us to ask for the support that we feel is needed and also to remember that that support is right there. And we may we may call upon it, um, but ultimately it, it is there because we are who we are, because we are choosing to acknowledge the truth of who we are, um, one in God um, and one um, oneness within ourselves, whole, integrated, um, and deserving of the love of God to flow freely through us at all times. So I think that's all of the messages that are for both Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. So 1818 on the video, and I will move, sorry, move forward. Um, let me start with Divine Feminine. I asked for a specific message and a keyword to keep it super simple. Um, and then I, um, I have some other uh, things that were given within each uh, for Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. So Divine Feminine, the message was stay with it. And the keyword was steadfast. So um, there were three or four things that, um, I re three, I received for Divine Feminine. Um, the first I kind of touched on earlier, which is any unaddressed issue, particularly those internal um, issues that you have sort of dealt with, but not fully, so must be uh, attended to. And that should be, um, you know, our focus for the month of May and to, to give ourselves um, the freedom to allow that to unfold organically, but to also tend to it. So think of it as a garden you're weeding and you are cultivating that which is uh, true um, for you and you are, um, you're, you're letting, you're weeding out um, and, and uprooting those things that are um, creating blockages within you. So continue that, whatever that is for you. 
Um, second thing is to release all resistance to how this all unfolds. Many, many of us are talking about this and um, that includes our emotional uh, response to the masculine's actions um, and like the way that I see it um, is like literally they're like they're all picking up the scales that are falling off and putting them back on their eyes. Like it's, it's a little absurd the way that it's shown to me and that I feel it. Um, and yet I can see that and see the absurdity of it and the, um, and then I can feel like, you know, from that unconditional loving space, I can feel, um, you know, their pain and I can, I can feel, um, the ripple effect of those choices and how hard, um, you know, like this choice, what this choice is leading to. And so what we are being asked to do is to release that um, emotional attachment, you know, honor what's there. I mean, I'm not saying don't feel it. Uh, it's almost like the opposite. Feel it, observe yourself feeling it, release it, trust, and release any expectation to how it's, um, how it's being made manifest. Um, the third thing um, is that, let's see, um, ways of change light. Oh, okay, yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, many of us remembered how this was going to unfold, and, and we, we anticipated these waves of change coming in. Um, at least, even if we didn't um, mentally think of it this way, and, and this is true for me, you know, we recognize it and we feel it. And it's like when something is, you know, a light comes on and this is okay, this is now. And those codes, you know, within us are uh, coming online and it's all happening and unfolding. And we remembered this, that it would unfold. But the reality is for many of us, there is a deep, um, uh, deep sadness or, you know, a level of, it's not regret, um, but it is a level of, um, yeah, I, I think a sadness that, um, you know, there was, um, again, back to that, there was a, 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 some options and um, there was an easier way. Um, and in that, um, that beautiful picture of, you know, the, um, you know, the, the brand new world and, you know, we're back in the garden and, you know, there is love and all of the games and shenanigans have stopped. Um, but we must, um, we must be real about our own um, sorrow before we can fully embrace the joy that will be ours. So that apparently is something that is um, important for the Divine Feminine in the month of May. I want to read something from scripture. I made a separate video on my own views about Jesus, the Bible, um, and I personally believe it has great value for what we're ha what's happening right now. Um, and um, so I, in that video, I share a little bit of my own um, perspective and knowing. And then, uh, so I just invite you to, um, if this resonates great, you know, take it. Um, and if it doesn't, then, you know, uh, seek the guidance and the inspiration and the solid foundations that will support you in this time. Um, I was drawn to the book of Jude. Um, it's one chapter long. It's the whole book, and I'm going to read it to you now. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, Although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that once that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all of this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. 
And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Woe to them. They have taken away they have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who only feed themselves. There they are clouds without rain, blown about by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness. And all of the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Steadfast. Steadfast, Divine Feminine. Much love. So I am 2727 on the video and I am turning to Divine Masculine. Divine Masculine, um, the message that I received to convey to you is um, turn back to God. And the key word uh, I was given to, and those are truth and revelation. Revelation as being revealed. So, and I want you to think of that as what is being revealed within you, okay? Things are being revealed in the external world. Um, but the key is the truth you know within your heart and what is being revealed in you, through you, to you. So the angels asked me to convey their most uh, beloved pronouncement of be not afraid. Be not afraid. So I have three messages and a passage of scripture to share with you as well. So the first is that, um, and this is, I'm speaking now what I was shown from my own understanding, which is limited. Um, but what I've shown is that, that many um, in who are divine masculines, not all, but many are wavering. You're on a seesaw. But the seesaw that you're on is one that is wavering between terror and defiance, terror and defiance. Um, and essentially, the reason you're on that seesaw is that you are operating through your own human will and the mind's understanding, and that mind keeps flip-flopping. Um, and you are, so <laughs> I want to say you're on the wrong seesaw, but you know, that's, that's just my judgment probably. But that's what's happening. There's a lot of wavering. Uh, that passage I just read, you may want to look at because um, the part about, um, 
you know, the being being tossed about on the on the sea and um, those um, those words, I think, um, describe it very well. So there's a lot of wavering. There's a like a fear and a paralysis, very present, the fear. Be not afraid, say the angels to you. Be not afraid. Um, some of you may be afraid of simply the truth-telling process that is going to be required um, to on some level, to some degree, in some situations. I can't speak to that for each of you, but but there there's a fear of speaking truth. So I think that can be in a lot of situations. And um, the key thing to know is that you are not alone as you do speak that truth and that you are, um, again, you are held in an infinite grace. You are protected. Those, the angel of protection is standing with you right now. So uh, you cannot be harmed um, when you uh, are in alignment with the will of God and with the truth and when you are honoring of yourself and others and most essentially honoring of the promise that you made to God. So, um, and I'd like to say on a personal note, first off, you know, uh, for many of you who are so afraid of telling the truth about whatever's happened, whatever's gone down, you know, in all likelihood, um, if you are, um, a, um, an illumined one, it's, it's quite likely that if your divine feminine um, has been um, awake and in tune with her own process that she, you know, intuitively knows and or has felt um, much of what has unfolded. And maybe the details, um, you know, aren't known, but on an energetic level, um, it's most certainly known. And uh, it perhaps will not be the kind of shock you think it will be. And even if it is, you will be held. And it is, uh, um, there is a, a, a hold, holding to account right now. I mean, I think that's what is evident in a lot of this message that um, that is unfolding, you know, and that I've been shown and many others have been shown. So, um, but be not afraid. Um, second message is that there. Uh, the disillusionment, the, see the disillusionment that you are experiencing as gift. When you are disillusioned, you are no longer bound. You are no longer shackled. You are no longer locked in a system that you feel you can't get out of. You are free. Okay. So while the disillusionment can create huge, uh, tumultuous waves in, uh, the physical world, the truth is you, um, have, will have never been more clear or more solid than when you allow that to happen and you, um, it will return you to your whole self, to your soul self, to all that is true. Back to that word truth. As things are revealed, the truth will be made known and the truth will set you free. Um, I was actually shown something I want to mention here, which is that um, there are there's a segment of the divine masculines who are well aware of this. Um, and uh, who understand actually what's happening even on a 3D perspective. Um, and then there are others who come in and out of that awareness. Um, but both groups are somehow desperately trying to convince themselves they do not know anything. And again, that goes back to fear, doesn't it? Fear that everything's going to fall apart. But you know, it's in the falling apart, in my experience, my own journey. It's in the falling apart that beautiful things are born and that all that is true remains intact and then you begin anew. So um, do not be afraid of when you are feeling that disillusionment, um, then go within and know the truth. You know, know what you know. Okay, it's time to know it. Um, the third um, sort of... Um, uh, the third sort of message was that um, sort of a warning, actually, um, that, you know, it was it was a uh, God and the trumpeted angels basically saying, you know, make make no mistake. Um, God's voice, uh, God's uh, presence will 
be embodied within you and through you. Um, you will speak truth. Um, there is free will and there is divine plan. And I don't know how it's all going to come about or what's going to happen, but um, I do know um, that the message was um, there is a level of in, in, um, urgency for the divine masculine to make a choice, whatever that choice is, make it, um, and to be prepared. I'm just like that song from um, The Lion King is running through my um, head right now, that be prepared, like uh, I forgot who, uh, it's a uh, it's not Mufasa it's the uncle whoever the uncle lion singing to the um the little lion Simba um and telling him you know you've got to you know essentially be strong show up as who you are and that's what it's time for it's time for you to show up as the wholeness of who you are the fullness of who you are it's been time <laughs> and uh, that's me speaking and uh no actually that's what they're saying actually right now yes it's like, uh, I think I said this in, in another video, like it's like you're being, you're so close to the fire and your feet are being held to that fire. So um, you are ready. And, you know, there's a, a verse in, um, there's an element here of uh, turning back, repentance, confession, you know, um, making things right. Now, I do um, understand um, for many of us, that when we come up against that moment, it can be so overwhelming and so disorienting. So return to your center and re regain your balance and know you will be held and protected and you will speak. Um, so if, I was going to say First John uh, 1, 9 says, you know, if we confess our sins, um, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That word sin is a loaded word, um, but essentially it simply means, you know, the error of our ways, missing the mark. Sin means missing the mark. You know, it's just, you know, mistakes. And no mistake can be your grave unless you so choose it. So, Maybe that's not the best choice. Maybe the best choice is to align yourself with the will of God, whatever that, um, the, whatever choices that may lead you to. Um, it's not about, you know, taking a particular action, um, although God will show you what is needed. Um, God will show you. So I was asked to share... <laughs> Hosea 8 and I'm like Hosea I haven't read Hosea in like I don't know probably since I was in graduate school <laughs> so it's been like wow um so Hosea 8 and the topic is reaping the whirlwind so it says this put the trumpet to your lips an eagle is over the house of the Lord because the people have broken my covenant and rebelled against my law Israel cries out to me, our God, we acknowledge you, but Israel has rejected what is good. An enemy will pursue him. They set up kings without my consent. They choose princes without my approval. With their silver and gold, they make idols for themselves to their own destruction. Samaria, throw out your calf idol. My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of purity? They are from Israel. This calf, a metal worker, has made it. It is not God. It will be broken in pieces, that calf of Samaria. They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stalk has no head. It will produce no flower. Were it to yield grain, foreigners would swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now she is among the nations like something no one wants. For they have gone up to Assyria like a wild donkey, wandering alone. Ephraim has sold herself to lovers. Although they have sold themselves among the nations, I will now gather them together. They will begin to waste away under the oppression of the mighty king. Through Ephraim, though Ephraim built many altars for sin offerings, these have become altars for sinning. I wrote for them the many things of my law, but they regarded them as something foreign. Though they offer sacrifices as gifts to me, and though they eat the meat, the Lord is not pleased with them. Now he will remember their wickedness and punish their sins. They will return to Egypt. Israel has forgotten their maker and built palaces. Judah has fortified many towns. 
but I will send fire on their cities that will consume their fortresses. So uh, it's a heavy message. Um, it's a warning. And um, that fire element, um, you know, takes me back to what, you know, what I said at the beginning, this thing that I keep feeling and hearing, which is walk through your fear of the fire and you will fly. Walk through your fear of the fire and you will fly. I'm going to leave you with a favorite passage of mine. It is from uh, Hebrews. Uh, it's the end of Hebrews, um, the closing words. Now, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So peace be with you um, on the way and continue to allow, uh, walk in that way and allow um, that the towers in your own life, both divine feminine and divine masculine, um, allow them to fall and know that you will be raised up and that together we are meant to fly. Um, yeah, we're meant to fly and we are needed in this world because the world itself has many towers that are crumbling and crashing down to the ground and the seas are being stirred up and there is rhetoric and there is a time of great uncertainty and this is why we are here and we need to get with it. So I love all of you um, and thank you so much for um, watching this video and you know take uh, what speaks to your heart leave the rest. Know you are loved and um, Godspeed.